Welcome back to the Original Gangsters Podcast. I'm Jimmy Bucciolato in the in that we were talking about something off air, so we're sorry to be, be so giggly here, but uh something that was that was struck me as funny. So we're in the uh, OG Command Center here at the Original Gangsters Podcast. Uh welcome. I'm here with my colleague and good friend, Scott Bernstein. Hey, now. We've got Benny in the house. I just want to remind everyone, uh, please subscribe to us, the video channel, the uh, audio podcast. Please follow us on social media. It's it's a big help when you uh, help spread the word and and retweet and like and and what have you. Um, This is going to be one of these shorter episodes. Uh, Scott has been uh, and Benny have been producing some of these. Uh, once in a while, I'll jump in. Some of them will be Scott solo, and uh, I think they're going to be popular. And uh, you know, I think people want more content, so we're happy to to bring that when we can. So this is going to be probably a, one a shorter 10, 15, 20 minute video, and it's a New York update. Some some big news coming out of New York, especially related to the Bonanno crime family and the boss Mancuso and people within his administration. So, Scott, if you want to walk us through some of your reporting and the latest updates, and we'll we'll and then talk I, about it. And then I can throw it to you for the controversial part of the, the part of the story that I'm getting kind of dinged on oh. <laughs> from online, right. but we can explain right. it. And right. I got no problem taking criticism. Yeah. Um, I, you know, uh, I think in this situation, there's, there's nuance to it. So... We've been talking about uh, the Mikey Mancuso administration um, on, on the OG pod for a while uh, and how it's <laughs> evolving uh, since he got out of prison in, in 2018. It's been five years, and it looks like as of the last couple of weeks, it's now definitive that he's heading back to prison to do uh, 18 months to 24 months on a violation of a supervised release. Uh, He's had a couple court hearings in the last month, and it looks like he'll be reporting uh, to prison at some time before Labor Day. And he's got to go back inside. And it looks like this is the second part is based on reporting from Jerry Capace, you know, the dean of organized crime um, reporters in in America. You know, he's the the top of the top. And and I I always tip my hat to Jerry. Uh, Jerry came out with a really good piece last week where he was able to a uh, name Mancuso's underboss as Johnny Joe Spirito uh, senior and that Johnny Joe is also being violated and is going to be going back to prison. I think a little less time uh, he has to do than Mancuso, but it's the same thing. Supervised release violation. They both came out around the same time uh, from a murder case, separate murders. Um, both related to, to Bonanno business. Uh, Spirito came out in, or Mancuso came out in fall of 2018 into a halfway house and then was out of the halfway house by early 19. And Spirito came into the halfway house in 19 and was out of the halfway house by 20. Um, and they're both going to be going back to prison. Um, and that, I guess, brings us to the controversial part was that I think some of my reporting before Jerry's reporting, uh, I don't believe it was inaccurate. I believe that it was dated. Um, I think it was a couple weeks dated. And that the plan that I had, I had reported that the plan was from when Mancuso went away, that Johnny Joe was going to step up and be acting boss. And that uh, I've reported for the last couple months that Ernie Aiello, one of uh, Mikey Mancuso's protégés, a young guy, he's only about 43 years old, uh, that he has been acting in some underboss capacity. I I said that he was the underboss the last three or four years. I believe for all intents and purposes that's true. But based on Jerry's reporting, um, I think, well, going back to my sources and talking to people, Aiello has actually been the acting underboss, street boss, while Johnny Joe has been the underboss. And I misfired on... um, on Johnny Joe's role, I guess, over the last couple of years. Um, anybody that knows this current Bonanno group of guys knows that Mancuso and, and Johnny Joe are, are longtime best friends. They go back in that Bronx crew to the 1970s. Um, was Spirito a purple gang guy too? I, I'm not sure. He's a, Spirito was like three or four years younger okay. than Mancuso. Um, I've been told that 
Mancuso baptized Spirito's son, uh, Johnny Boy, who's also involved in, in the crime family. Um, so, you know, I, I can admit when I, when I misfire, I, I knew that Johnny Joe was playing a, a role in things, and that's why I was told that he was going to um, take over the, the acting boss duties when Mancuso went away. And I believe when I was told that, that's what the plan was. And then I think over the last couple of weeks, or what I've been told, was that over the last couple of weeks, Spirito and his attorney have been told that he's also being violated. Mm-hmm. And Jerry, Jerry broke that last week. So uh, I didn't get the story 100% true. I think I got it about you know, 80, 80 to 90%. And then I, I corrected the record. So that, that's, that's kind of where we are right now. So uh, when Mancuso and Spirito go away, you're saying Aiello will be the acting what? I don't know. I don't want to speculate. Just, okay. I, Ernie, I, I think I stand by what I've reported yeah. the last couple of months that right now in that family, everything goes through Ernie before it gets to, to Mikey. And that Ernie is like the, the, the point of contact kind of for everything in that family. And it started after I was told after Mancuso got out of out of prison um and around 1920 Iello at that point would have just been coming up on 40 um started to be um tapped or or groomed as the street boss i guess it was acting underboss i was saying underboss Spirito, i believe based on jerry's reporting and and people i've talked to had the official title but you have to understand just like mancuso and we know because they're both going away for this. They had to be weary of who they were meeting with, and they couldn't really um, freely go about their business in New York City because of those violations or because of the um, supervised release. So they needed someone like Aiello to be running point on the street for them. He, Aiello can meet with anybody. Right. Although, it, obviously, we see that they, they um, eventually did start to um, go out and about and that's what they're right. Violated. And that's what, <laughs> yeah, that's how they got violated. Which, and which a, our audience might not know. I mean, they, they met with guys from the Columbos. That's one of the pieces of yeah. evidence. They're and using they, and they them. have a, the picture was released two right. weeks ago of Mancuso walking with Johnny Joe in Long Island on a walk and talk. Right. And they're not supposed to be together. <laughs> right. Um, right. And then there were other pictures that prosecutors released in, in the hearing to discuss the, the supervised release violation to kind of prove it. They rolled out a bunch of pictures, some wiretaps. Um, the pictures were of Mikey Mancuso with Johnny Joe, Mikey Mancuso with another group of guys hanging out at what appeared to be his day-to-day headquarters right now, which is a, um, an optical oh, right. place on Long Island. called right. I think it's called Red Eyes. And it's owned by Mikey Mancuso's girlfriend. And he seems to be taking meetings there and, and walking talks in that vicinity. And then there was photos of him going to a, uh, a dinner in the Bronx uh, by himself unaccompanied to go meet other members of the bananas in a restaurant in the Bronx. And then there were uh, photos of a birthday party that he attended in October of 2020 of Vinny unions, AKA Vinny Ricciardo, who is a capo in the Columbos. Right. Who's, facing a racketeering indictment right now. And Vinny Ricciardo was having a birthday party and um, Mikey Mancuso and and some members of his inner circle showed up and we've seen pictures of that. And there was actually a picture that looks like, well, there's one picture that was taken that looks like it was taken from another table. Could have been like a fed dressed as a patron and snapping a photo like surprise right but then there was another photo that they released which was clearly a staged photo that um that mancuso took oh the guys with vinnie with vinnie ricciardo and some other people and they were and they were clearly smiling for the camera right it that's just it blows my mind that's that you could be a mob boss knowing that you can't be seen with certain people and then allowing your picture to be taken, like with your arm around the guy smiling. Yeah. And then Jerry, you know, this is neither here nor there, but you know, Jerry kind of editorialized a little bit in his reporting last week. And, you know, I'm not disputing it that Mancuso's leadership um, 
in terms of these decisions, I think the word he used was boneheaded. Well, his words. Right. <laughs> but um, what I would say is, um, as the theoretical criminologist here, um, I've said this on other episodes, when, when you were talking about Mancuso um, being active in day-to-day operations, there were some people that scoffed at that and said, oh, he's on supervised release, he can't do that. And and I just made the point, like, are, are you are you serious? You you think that career criminals, guys who are outlaws by nature, I don't mean like like you know what I'm saying, like yeah. guys who are rogue outlaws by nature, they're they're rule breakers in their DNA. Yeah. And and there's a spectrum. Some guys, when they're on supervised release, they they try they try to do their best to stay out of trouble. But if you think every motherfucker that's on supervised release is, is laying low, yeah. th- that's clearly not true. Um, these guys like to push things as far as they can push it. And in this case, they got, they got caught. They got caught. And with Mancuso, you know, put it into context, he'd been in prison for uh, you know, roughly 15 years. And he became the official boss of the Bananos while he was in prison. He only had about two years on the outside as acting boss, yeah. a year and a half in the 2000s. Right. So he gets out in 18, 19. He's the official boss. You, you want to, you know, of course you want to take that out for a spin. You think he's been right. watching he wanna, Netflix right. and uh, playing fucking bingo. He wants like, to get out there and be, you know, I mean, treated like he's a boss. Yeah. I mean, don't, don't, don't be naive about that. And it's like, Oh, well, if the feds knew they, they would bust them right away. Not necessarily either. Right. Because, it's not the same thing as tickle the wire, but it's a it's a sort of similar thing. Is they want to see who they're who they're fucking with. Yeah, they want the fans want to right. see who they're all. Well, that's talking why they to. waited. They waited right. three years to bring right. two two years, right. two and a half years. Right, right. Uh, and then we'll finish up by saying that you know what my reporting is saying or what my reporting is telling me. My sources that um, Mikey Mancuso is is re- remaking this family over the last four or five years, and and this is part of. Who's going to look after the family when he goes away? It, it all starts and ends in the Bronx. And, and he realized when he was inside that, that letting the power go over to Brooklyn um, and Long Island um, with the Cameranos and, and that faction was, was the wrong move. He, I, I, I don't think he felt he had any choice. There was circumstances that he had no one else to kind of turn to to run the family. And it, it quickly got out of control because Camerano, within a year or two, was trying to take the family for himself. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, I think when he retroactively looks back and, and does an autopsy of that, or what I've been told, is that he, he laments not keeping the power in the Bronx. And right mm-hmm. now, all the power in that family is really in the Bronx, with the exception of uh, Vinny Badalamenti, who is uh, Mancuso's alleged conciliary, who comes from Brooklyn. But he's on good terms with Mancuso. Yeah, he's he's. I call. Right. I've been told that he's called the the Mikey Nose Whisperer. That he right. he can talk the um, Mancuso way that other people can't in terms of calming him down and giving him counsel. And but, and Bruno and Delicato is still a yeah a powerhouse. And but Bruno and and Mikey have an up and down relationship. No, I, I know, right? That's because my Bruno was so close to Vinny Bastiano, <laughs> right, and Bastiano right. wanted to kill Mancuso at the end. Yeah. Um. But I have heard that in Delicato is chiming in on some things and uh, sending word. He, he's on supervised release right now. He just got out in the last six, five, yeah, six recently, months. Recently, very recently. Um, but I'm told that everything's kind of in the Bronx right now. Ernie Aiello uh, and some old school guys like uh, you know, Johnny Palazzolo, who, who they call um, Johnny Skyway, who was in his 80s right now, was a former uh, acting boss for, for Mancuso, who I think is the elder statesman in, in that Bronx crew. But then you got Patty boy, uh, Myerino, who I think is another guy to really keep an eye out for either is, um, somewhere in the administration. He's been a capo in, in, in Queens for, for a little bit now. And I, I've, I've been told that with Spirito and Mancusa going away, Aiello, Myerino, and then, uh, another group of, of like old elder statesmen, counselors are going to help run the family. Um, but, you know, Aiello will be the head of the snake and possibly Patty Boy will be either head of the snake B to Ernie Aiello's head of the snake A or he'll be right behind the head of the snake. And um, 
you know, Patty Boy was sponsored uh, for his his induction, his making into the Bananos came from Mancuso because Mancuso was sponsored for his button by Patty Boy's dad, Chubby um, Mayorino, so sponsored that, yeah. Mancuso. So there's this pre-existing trust, relationship. Trust, yeah. yeah. Um, so, and then Johnny Boy Spirito, I think, should also be mentioned. And that's not Johnny Joe. There's Johnny Boy Spirito, who is the son, who's 40 years old. And then there's Johnny Joe, who's the underboss, who's 64. Uh, and Johnny Boy has had a bit of a roller coaster of the last five, 10 years um, in terms of, you know, if you're going to look at uh, gangsters as, as, as stocks, you know, the stock market has been up yeah, and down, with, and down. With, with Johnny boy. He, he was uh, very powerful and uh, a big um, part of the early Mancuso regime. When Mancuso went to prison and was running things um, through people on the street, Johnny boy is a young guy was, uh, helping out with that was relaying messages back and forth. He got in trouble for messing up some of the messages. Some people thought that he was intentionally misleading messages that were coming from prison. Um, and then when Joe Camerano takes over, they demoted him. Uh, when Mancuso comes out of prison in, in 1819 and then his dad comes out in 1920, he's back into the good graces. Uh, Not even 2020. Right, sorry, in 2020. Uh, and then the last thing I'll say about Johnny Joe, and we'll wrap this up, Johnny Joe remains the top suspect in the last Bonanno gangland hit, which was little Anthony Secafico, who was killed in July of 2009. It's a variety of reasons. He was allegedly stealing money. He was allegedly sleeping with the wives of imprisoned Bonanno members and, and their girlfriends, mm. wives and girlfriends. And then when he was allegedly, when he was called on the carpet for some of this behavior by Johnny Boy, uh, little Anthony smacked Johnny Boy. Wow. Uh, and little Anthony was, was gunned down uh, in Staten Island uh, early morning hours of, of uh, July, I think, 2nd, uh, 2009. And it looked like he recognized the assailant mm. and people believe there's been the FBI believes that, that Johnny boy might've been the shooter. So Johnny boy's proven his, his is that, is that in, uh, I mean, how do you just, just so people are interested uh, it's, in research it's, methods. I mean, what you, this is coming out this of, this is coming from law enforcement and, and from like a, do, a, a grand jury testimony that grand, was okay. tied into the Secafico murder that was never brought. Okay. Um, as well as there, there's a lot of, there's a so lot the, of, so the grand jury didn't find it compelling enough. No, the grand jury never brought, brought any charges, but there was there was grand jury testimony in the in the Secafico murder. Interesting. Well, one thing I'll just say, which is kind of interesting, because I'm more interested in the in the macro stuff, and you're the you're the the man on the street, is um, this shift from Messino, who who put a lot of uh, kind of white collar earners in administrative positions, yeah. and that's the direction he wanted to take things in. And then it turned out those guys couldn't couldn't handle like the stiff the prison sentences. sentences yeah. And Mancuso, they flipped it. It's a one eighty. Like now most of those the, guys in his orbit are, are known are as tough, tough guys. As tough guys. Yeah, it's it's Enforcers, you know, guys. You brute, don't fuck brute, with. brute strength and power is, is very different. Is what is going to allow you to rise in, in the Mikey Mancuso regime? Right. Yeah. So it's kind of an interesting. It's an, inter it's an interesting. Uh, you know, I guess point of departure or, or uh, uh, discerning between. The two regimes. Yeah, I think so. And and we know historically, like a family like Detroit always had that. I know it's smaller scale than New York. I'm well aware of that. So it's not a, it's not a 100% comparative analysis, but they were always able to have that balance between guys like the, the, the Jackalonis and other guys who were more known as enforcers. And then guys like Jack Toko, who was more of a boardroom kind of racketeer. And they always had that balance. Um, obviously it didn't work in the campaign. No, some of the, some got, of the earners, so sometimes it doesn't work. Some but. of the earners in the Mancusa regime are, are being marginalized. It sounds like it. Yeah. Um, that doesn't mean that they're being shelved. No. Uh, it, I think they're just, some of them are capped in terms of, uh, promotions and so forth. Yeah. So it's, and it's someone like Ernie Aiello and he obviously has shown quite a bit of talent and, and, and instills confidence in the older guys. But he's pretty young, and in order for him to get to this point, 
and, and again, this is this is um, established. You know, he was involved in three really high profile physical altercations on behalf of Mancuso mm-hmm. to prove his. Yeah, it's been well to done. prove his loyalty. I mean, going all the way back to 2012 when Mikey Meldish got beat down in front of uh, Rayos for sleeping with Mikey Mancuso's girlfriend. Aiello, who at that time uh, was in his 30s, was at bad. the forefront, allegedly, of that, of that altercation. So we'll keep an eye out for it, uh, for, it for all this, for you. And uh, we went a little longer than I thought, but I, I think this was good. And uh, for Scott, or for Scott, for Jimmy Bucciolato and Ben Augusta Behind the Glass, I'm Scott Bernstein. We'll see you next week. OG Pod out.